Hello, my name is John Spain, and welcome to my YouTube channel. As always, I explain that title of the underground. I think about the underground church in present day China and Iran and other places all over the earth that the uh, Holy Spirit is expanding the body of Christ before we're at the end of the church age. I believe that the scripture shows us that Jesus Christ himself taught, along with Paul, a pre tribulation rapture of the church before the seven year tribulation. The church will be raptured up. There'll be time of chaos that the Antichrist comes out of, and then he'll offer peace, especially to Israel. And then they'll start the seven-year tribulation. We're not here during that time. Uh, Jesus Christ promised Himself that we'll be not here for the hour of temptation that fall upon the, own earth, the whole earth. That's Revelation uh, chapter three, verses ten through eleven. Revelation nineteen, verses seven through sixteen, talks about the wedding feast in heaven. Then Jesus Christ. Uh, coming down on a horse called Faithful and True, wearing many crowns. That's the crowns of righteousness that talks about in Revelation uh, 3, verse 11. It says, Let no man take your crown. He's talking about the crown of righteousness that Paul refers to that we get for believing in the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine. At the beam of seat judgment that takes place before the seven-year tribulation, when we go up to heaven, we go before Jesus Christ. We are born again. We have eternity with God, but we still have rewards or no rewards. We are judged by how we are, uh, how we lived here on earth. And so we get crowns of righteousness that we lay at Jesus' feet. And then later it talks about in Revelation 19, uh, 7 through 16, about his second, as he comes down, we follow him. Uh, it talks about those in the wedding feast, what they wear in great detail. And it talks about his army, part of his army. That's Jude 14 and 15. We come down with Jesus Christ. He comes down with 10,000 of his saints. That's referring to pre tribulation raptured saints. We come down for judge, uh, past judgment. Matthew chapter 24, verses 29 through 31, talks about Jesus Christ's second coming. He talks about as he touches the earth, he sends out the angels to collect his elect. That is a rapture. That is not the rapture of the church that many people misteach. That's a rapture to bring all to Armageddon. Understanding, there's many raptures in Scripture. Uh, RaptureBelief.com, it's a web page I started. i got eight blogs on there. I'm going to add many more, uh, hopefully soon in the future. But I show 13 raptures according to Scriptures and where they're at and who they are. For example, Enoch was raptured, never saw death. Elijah was raptured, never saw death. Uh, Philip, Acts chapter 8, verse 6, uh, Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. As soon as he baptized the Ethiopian, the official was caught up in the spirit, taken to Astos, where he started preaching the word. And so that's a rapture one location on earth to another. That's a prime example of what's going to happen at the end of the seven-year tribulation. Two more raptures will take place. Uh, as we come down the, the, with Jesus Christ at the seventh coming, the souls of those martyred during the seven-year tribulation uh, will come out from underneath the altar and they get their glorified bodies as we touch down at, uh, in Armageddon, or the beginning of Armageddon, I should say. Uh, that's when the, the rapture of everybody coming to Armageddon. Why? Because they're going to separate the wheats and the tares and show the sheep from the goats. And so that's all taught in Scripture. Understanding the Scripture. And to understand the Scripture, you have to be born again Christian. To understand what men's teaching of lies compared to the truth. Catholic Church tried to deny the truth. In 431 AD at the Council of Ephesus, the Catholic Church outlawed the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine that was taught for over 400 years by Jesus Christ himself and Paul and tried to rewrite books. But we have things through the years that have shown that this is uh, what the Catholic Church tried to do. Like 202 AD, Arrhenius wrote a 15-chapter book titled Against Heresies, he talked about the imminent return of Christ. He talked against uh, uh, what things were being taught by uh, the church at that time. 99 AD, we have a letter written by Clement of Rome titled, I Clement, that he wrote to the Corinthians, and he talked about the imminent return of Christ. The early church leaders uh, believed in the pre tribulation rapture doctrine. Later in, and through the years, the church, uh, man's church tried to deny the truth because man's church is of Satan, not of God. So what I do here is to give an understanding, an understanding where we're in. Israel's in the Psalm 83 war. Everybody keeps saying Ezekiel 38 all over the place. Ezekiel 38, 
does involve Iran, Iran, Russia, and Turkey are the main main three players. The reason why it takes place because Iran has to build up their military because this war that Israel's in right now is a Psalm 83 war. It's about the destruction and annihilation of Israel. When you have Palestinians say free Palestine from the river to the ocean means total genocide, kill out all the Jews. These are not innocent people. And therefore, this war right now is about the annihilation of Israel. Period. The whole world's against them, including the United States of America. Now, Ezekiel 38 war takes place later about mid-tribulation because it's about to take a spoil. What's the spoil? What Israel's going to gain out of this war. Understand, before this war is over, we go up. The sudden destruction takes place is against those people that's coming against Israel. And we know the players, and if you read Psalm 83, it talks about ten key countries surrounding Israel. The tents of Edom, which is uh, the descendants of Ish uh, Esau. Remember, Jacob and Esau fought over birthright. Well, these are descendants of Esau. They are also the modern-day Palestinians of South Jordan. The Ishmaelites is the modern-day South Arabia. The Hagreens is modern-day Egyptians. Jabal is modern-day Hezbollah in North Lebanon. Ammon is modern-day Palestinians in North Jordan. Amalek is modern-day Sinai. Philistia is modern-day Hamas of Gaza. Tyre is modern-day Hezbollah in South Lebanon. Assyria is modern-day Syria in northern Iraq. And Moab is modern-day Palestinians in Central Jordan. These are all the key players in the, uh, the war that's taking place. Now, what I'm reading to you is Isaiah 17. This is the destruction of Damascus. Why? Because Damascus, Hezbollah is so in, in wrapped around there with all kinds of missiles and stuff that can fly into uh, Israel that they have to destroy. Also understand there's a lot of chemical threat there that will be soon future used against Israel. And I believe that's reason why it will be nuclear. Damascus will be destroyed. And it will be nuclear. And it's described greatly in 14 uh, verses out of chapter 17. Isaiah 17 states, The burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city and shall be a ruinous heap. The cities of Ur are forsaken. They shall be for flocks, which shall be lie down, and none shall make them afraid. The fortress also cease from Ephraim, and the kingdom from Damascus, and the remnant of Syria. They shall be as the glory of the children of Israel, saith the Lord of hosts. And in that day it shall come to pass that the glory of Jacob shall be made thin. The fatness of his flesh shall wax clean. This describes nuclear. It describes your, your, your flesh becoming wax. And it shall be as when the harvest gathered the corn and reapeth the ears with his arm. It shall be as he that gathereth ears in the valley at Raphim. Yet gleaning grapes shall be left in it, as the shaking of the olive tree, two or three berries in the top of the uttermost barrel, four or five in the outmost fruitful branches. Thereof saith the Lord God of Israel. At that day shall a man look to the Maker, and his eyes shall have respect to the Holy One of Israel. And he shall not look to the altars, the work of his hands, neither shall respect that which his fingers have made, either the groves or the images. In that day shall his strong cities be as forsaken Baal, and an uttermost branch which they left behind of the children of Israel. And there shall be desolation, because thou hast forgotten the God of thy salvation, and hast been mindful of the rock of thy strength. Therefore shalt thou plant pleasant plants, and shall set it with strange slips. In that day shalt thou make thy plant to grow, and in the morning shall thou thy seed to flourish, but the harvest shall be a heap in the day of grief and of desperate sorrow. Woe to the multitude of many people which make a noise like the noise of the seas, and to the rushing of the nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. The nations shall rush like the rushing of many waters, but God shall rebuke him, and they shall flee far off, and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind, and like a rolling thing before the whirlwind. And behold, at evening time trouble, and there in the morning he is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us, and the lot of them that rob us. In other words, those that come against Israel will be destroyed overnight. It will be a nuclear war at that moment. And I do believe we'll be gone before then. The pre-tribulation rapture of the church. Understanding the pre-tribulation rapture of the church, the rapture after that takes place is mid-tribulation. That's the rapture of the two witnesses. The last, uh, Revelation 11, the light dead in his three, three and a half days are caught up. And as I mentioned before, many times you have the rapture of the martyred saints at the end of the seven-year tribulation. As we come down, they'll be raptured up. They'll come down to earth. And then you'll have the last rapture, 
which is the rapture bringing everybody to Armageddon for judgment. Understanding God's word, you only, only a born again Christian can understand. And that's what people don't get. You have to be born again Christian to have understanding of everything. And truly make God God of your life. That's, that's what it's all about, submitting yourself to God. You submit yourself to God, He gives you understanding. He gives you the, His Word. We have to understand that uh, a lot of times people try to say we're going to be here through the seven year tree of relation. That is a lie. Jesus Christ died on the cross. It's what He did for our salvation. And therefore, by saying we're here during the seven year tribulation, you're denying Jesus Christ coming for his bride for one thing. And Jesus says, You deny me before man, I will deny you before the Father. So true doctrine matters. A lot of people will come up and say, Well, it doesn't matter what doctrine it really doesn't matter. It does matter. Wake up spiritually. If you believe you're going to be here during the seven year tribulation, you are. You listen to man, you're damned to hell. At the rapture, the Lord comes for his saints, 1 Thessalonians 4.16. At the second coming, the Lord comes with his saints, 1 Thessalonians 3.13. At the rapture, the Lord comes only for his believers, but his return to earth will impact all people. The rapture is a translation resurrection event. The second coming is not. At the rapture, the Lord takes believers from earth to heaven to the Father's house, John 14.3. At the second coming, believers return from earth, heaven to earth, Matthew 24.30. The rapture is an imminent, silence event that from the human perspective could occur at any moment, whereas the second coming will be preceded by all kinds of signs. Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 through 29. The same event cannot logically be uh, signless and yet portend by numerous signs. This is contradictory. The best harmonization of these two different efforts report, supports a pre-tribulation rapture. Yes, we are about to go up. And we know we're in that season. That's the moment we're in right now. That's why I do these videos to give understanding. Uh, to tell people to go to rapturebelief.com, I have a few blogs on there. i got eight. Uh, hopefully later I'll put more on there. on there. I'm doing things with my health and things with VA, and I'm busy doing everything else, so I'm trying to make videos plus get the information out to people. And so we're about to go up. Before then, we're already expanding the body of Christ. It matters. Uh, what you listen to, are you going to listen to man or are you going to listen to God? And that's the choice you have. Yes, we are saved by salvation, uh, given to us by Jesus Christ, the gift of grace. But you still have that choice. You have that choice. You've got a hole that you've been given in your heart. What do you choose to fill that hole with? It matters where you spend eternity. You're going to believe on what Jesus Christ did on the cross? Or are you going to listen to men? And that that's it. Uh, the way to hell is wide and open and free. Because many go there, and the way to heaven is open and narrow. Yes, God made hell. But in reality, people misteach. God does not send people to hell. God made it made sin. He did not make robots. He wants your love. He gave an opportunity. He sacrificed. He became flesh and sacrificed himself. So you go to him. He's trying to keep you from hell. But many go to hell. Why? Because they give in to the flesh. They love the flesh and their bodies more than they love God. Thank you and God bless you.